Hi guys, welcome to our lecture series on getting started with the PCB designing tool Eagle from CATSoft. In this series, we'll be looking at how to use the tool efficiently. Let's begin with uh, looking at the content on the course. First, we'll understand the idea and the need of PCB designing. Why should we learn this particular concept? Or why we as engineers should know how to design certain uh, circuits and what is a good circuit design? In the second part on the series, we'll be looking at uh, we'll be looking at different tools available with the Eagle software. So there are so many tools available on the tool palette with the software. We'll be looking at every each one of those in detail. The third and the fourth lecture, we'll be looking at developing circuits right from schematic and finishing a complete board layout. We will be looking at single layer board layouts in this course. And last, as a conclusion, we'll be looking at what are the types of PCBs, what PCBs are basically, and how do you make a PCB on your own using the hot press method. So let's begin with the course. Now first and the foremost question is, why does the industry stress on compact designs? Or why do we really need compact designs? What led to the development of system on chip why does this industry stress on concepts like system on chip why do they want smaller ICs so yes we are discussing why is stress laid over compact designs or over achieving compact designs for your circuit boards now first and the foremost reasons for compact designs is that is basically the trade-off between area power and cost now let's take a scenario here say you are a constructor and you have a plan to invest say X amount in erecting a building which is 10 storied Now, once you have 10 storey building, you have you plan to have 20 flats, which is two flats per floor. So you are looking at an investment, which will be 20 into the requirement. Obviously, you will recover this when the flats are sold, but initial investment is going to come from you. Now you're looking at another pro proposal, which says a 20 storey building with 20 flats, one flat per floor, you're also you're looking at 20 into the requirement. This is your investment. But now you do understand the size of flat in this particular case and the size of flat in this particular case. It's going to occupy one full floor. So the amount distribution that you must be thinking for say electrical requirement, then maintenance and the other parameters is going to at least get multiplied by 2. Now as an investor when you have the freedom of investing only X amount and suddenly you realize that okay this plan looks great it, it looks very attractive but the investment about amount suddenly doubles you are definitely going to question this like how do I do this? Or is it worth doing it? Who's going to buy it at the end of the day? Right? These questions do come to your mind. So against... So what I'm trying to tell you here is the trade-off between area versus power versus cost. Now as... Okay, now let's look at it from an engineer's perspective. You're making a design circuit design which has say five blocks involved one two three four five and each of these are going to function independently and they are meant for specific function now as per your product specification or product requirement the power distribution or the power block on your circuit has to be in this particular location only. It's the product requirement now. 
So now to give or to provide power to individual blocks, you will be routing it in such a way. Or maybe you can shorten this path a little bit. So this is going to be your power distribution in case 1. Now, if a good engineer is to design this, a skilled engineer rather, he might achieve the same thing in smaller the size where obviously the individual blocks are also scaled they aren't spaced out we will look at these terms when we look at physical designs using eagle when we actually design two circuits using eagle you will understand the meaning of spaced out component placement layout etc don't worry about that now so again if you observe it's the same layout but individual blocks as well as the complete as well as the overall design has been reduced the space has been reduced it's it's made as a compact design now if you have a look your power distribution your paths are going to reduce. In another case it is very much possible that an engineer comes up with a square layout. This fellow has put even more efforts to make individual blocks also more compact resulting in still a reduction of size in the overall board. Now if you observe In this case, these parts are going to be even smaller. Now why do we have to discuss three cases like this? Now uh, when you design a PCB board, you have to understand that these parts are nothing but copper. They are made out of copper, right? They are going to be conductive material. So these tracks or paths are going to be responsible to provide power to every individual block on your on your circuit so these paths have to be constructed for a particular width which should be able to withstand so much power plus their length must also come into consideration now do you agree that longer the wire or longer the cable more is going to be the voltage drop right since it's resistance and long more the length more is going to be the drop same is the case here if you consider these tracks as nothing but conductive wires more the length more is going to be the drop okay okay now consider case one this power block has to provide power to this block one considering voltage drop that might occur in this cell track 1 your power has to be now again let's now again talking about power and area let's consider case 1 and let's name this as track 1 so this track 1 is responsible for providing power to block 1 and track 3 is going to be responsible for providing power to track 3 now do you see that track 1 has say a length L1 and in all the three cases it is very clear that L1 is greater than L2 is greater than L3. Yes. So now as designers when you consider case 1 your power requirement to provide sufficient power or to provide optimum power to achieve the desired block 1 operation is going to increase because your voltage drop is going to be more on L1 so to drive block 1 efficiently your power required is going to be more similarly for track 3 out here now if you see in case 2 your power requirement for track 1 is going to reduce and it is going to reduce further in case 3 
let's understand this better do you agree that this particular track will have its own resistance this will also have some resistance whereas in case 3 also will have some resistance let's say in case 1 we are looking at a resistance of 1k which is still too much here we are looking at a resistance of say 100 ohms and here finally in case 3 we are looking at a resistance of say maybe 20 ohms when you're looking at the resistance of 1k considering the voltage and the current flowing through this line your res your voltage drop across 1k is going to be considerably high now to overcome this voltage drop the power supplied also has to be more now once you understand this you also understand that if the wire or your path is going to show a resistance of say only 100 ohms your drop is going to be considerably less hence the power required to drive the circuit is also going to be considerably less similarly if you check 20 ohms now it's even less so the power requirement is going to drop further now why is this power requirement so important now when you have to design a so all in all we do understand that more the area over which your design is spread more is the power that you will require to overcome these intermittent drops now when you have to increase the power power supplied to the board or to your circuit design that is going to considerably is going to increase significantly it's as good as case 2 now as an engineer or as a designer you wouldn't want to do this so this is the first reason why the foremost reason why stress is laid on making compact designs okay now you must be wondering that circuits can also be made on breadboard right most of your lab experiments you are able to verify your implement the circuit verify and take readings on the breadboard then why use PCB now when as a student breadboards are okay you don't really see any limitations when you are using a breadboard for experiment purpose whereas in the industry or as a designer you are not looking at experiments you're looking at a prototype of a product now as a designer now as a designer breadboard now from a designer's perspective breadboard has its own physical limitations now let's have a look at these the first and the foremost limitation is scalability as we discussed earlier if you have a circuit like this say this is some XYZ circuit circuit design and you have multiple sections you have one two three four and five sections now okay with breadboard you can have a power section standalone very convenient but you have you also have five independent sections right now if each of these sections will have say 10 or so resistors a few LEDs and some diodes and some other components maybe one or two ICs then your breadboard a single breadboard may or may not able to may or may not be able to host or carry all of these device all of these components now for that in in that particular case you might want five breadboards for all independent blocks now when making or trying is trying to implement a product as a student this looks very convenient
but in an industry this will be a very naive way of making projects even as a student if you have to say now you have your power supply here you have breadboard 1 you have breadboard 2 you have breadboard 3 4 and 5 and all of these are interconnected imagine the mess of wires that's going that's going to surround too many wires just too many wires to handle it just makes your circuit, circuit even more shabby do you want to do that now you you now you wouldn't want your circuit to be now you wouldn't want your circuit to look something like this right wires 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 okay you are wires there are wires your wire wire it's going to look something like this you don't want it to look like that right so this is one reason this is one very prominent limitation when using breadboards the other one now let's look at a second reason why breadboards are not preferred over PCB or why PCB boards are preferred is that breadboards will be able to withstand current and power up to a certain limit you wouldn't want to test a circuit which has say almost 5 ampere current flowing through the breadboard you wouldn't risk doing that or else even you wouldn't want to test a circuit on the breadboard which has power in the range of kilowatts you wouldn't want to do these things right so but still you have to test these two scenarios in this case you will have to implement your circuit on the PCB isolate the sections and then test one another reason for not using breadboards is as we've discussed before in this particular case when you have more wires you have more the chances of short circuits so you must have observed when you are performing your lab experiments if the component leads are pressed into the breadboard they tend to bend at times even wires they tend to bend and underneath the breadboard these bends tend to create a short so you must be hearing the overload beep on your power supply now this happens on when using a breadboard so this is yet another reason for not using breadboards professionally okay let's go back to our reason one now you have a circuit which turns out to be like this again so in this particular case you're using wires right too many of them now to connect block 1 and power you have at least two wires getting from power block to the block 1 also you have some interconnection between block 1 and block 2 you have some connection between block 3 and block 4 now if you have if you've got to use multiple breadboards you might need longer interconnect wires and that does nothing but leads us to the same problem discussed here which is more the voltage drop more the power required and hence not very stable testing conditions this is going to be unstable your circuit is going to be unstable so to conclude why why use PCBs and why not breadboards we have listed a few reasons out here the first and the foremost being scalability if you are going to use multiple breadboards for to test a circuit imagine the space required 
it's going to occupy too much of space and your circuit is eventually going to look ugly your project might not look presentable second is the power word current versus power ratings of the breadboards they might not be able to withstand current in a higher range as well as power in the higher range also the risk of short circuits when working with breadboards and when you use multiple breadboards you have longer interconnect wires again leading to the same issue of more voltage drop and more power requirement so to avoid these reasons to avoid these issues professional designers will always prefer pcb designs or will always prefer pcb boards even though the development time will be significantly development as as well as testing time will be significantly higher as compared to breadboards but due to obvious advantages that a pcb will have professional designers or industry will always look for engineers to know this particular skill set and this is where pcb designing comes into picture in this particular lecture we have uh, looked at the need of pcb designing why we should know this particular skill set in the next lecture we'll proceed with understanding the idea and learning the tools on eagle and learning the tools available on eagle better until then thank you